this is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com and I'd love to talk with you about the Mandela Effect and the fact that this goes way farther back than most people realize. In fact, I'd like to invite you to think about your earliest experiences with the Mandela Effect as you're watching this video. And even later, if later you realize, wow, I just thought of another one, come on back and leave a comment because I'd love to hear about it. Or send me an email. As you might realize, I've been tracking this phenomenon since the late 1990s when I first published a book, the original version of this book, Reality Shifts, When Consciousness Changes the Physical World, and I talked about the Alive Again phenomenon, mentioning a famous actor uh, who some people may or may not remember, but basically he, I'd heard that he died and passed away, and then later saw that he was alive again. So if you saw that the TV show Dallas and Who Shot JR, then you might remember Larry Hagman played that character. But this is for real. This is Larry Hagman himself. And I was blown away by the fact that I saw him alive again. And I know for sure he died before I wrote that book in the 1990s. So now I'd like us to think about even earlier experiences. Because when I think back to the 1970s, I can clearly remember a time when I had heard a song so many times on the radio that I'd gotten tired of it. You know, you can get kind of sick of a song. And then it, they stopped playing it altogether. So I started missing the song, ironically, <laughs> the one I had started getting tired of hearing. But then I couldn't find it on any of the radio stations anywhere. And I looked, I kept changing the dial, nothing. So I gave it up, stopped thinking about it. Several months went by. And then there it was. And the radio station announcers were proudly saying, this is the first time we've played this song, this brand new song, that kind of thing. And I was really mystified because it didn't make any sense to me how they could be saying that this was a brand new song when I had heard it so many times so long ago and then there had been a complete break in their playing it. So if you have similar memories such as this uh, and other people write to me telling me that they, for example, have read a book that didn't exist yet and then they went to go find the book, they can't find it. Uh, similar things have happened with magazines and TV shows where people know for sure that they've seen a TV show that there's no way they could have seen at that period in time. And so when you think about these kind of things then you might notice as I have that some of these experiences go back in my case to the 1970s and that tells us that this Mandela effect has been with us for quite a while and perhaps even farther back than the CERN laboratory. That's what I tend to believe is true, and I'll tell you why. Uh, as I've been researching this phenomenon, it's come to my attention that a lot of us assume that quantum phenomena and weirdness, that spooky action at a distance kind of weirdness, superposition of states kind of weirdness, that that only exists uh, under the rug, under the von Neumann cut. That if it's a certain s scale of size, that then it can be quantum if it's small enough. And if it's over a certain size level, then of course, classical physics applies and we can ignore quantum effects. What I'm proposing is perhaps we can't ignore quantum effects and that this Mandela effect is bigger than we thought. And it's actually not requiring any kind of conspiracy theory because when you take a look at the way, for example, like this song that I remember in the 70s. And if you look even further back, such as examples of misrememberings, you can do all kinds of Google Scholar searches. In fact, you can look at my articles, use Google Scholar, type in Cynthia Sue Larson, and you'll see that I've written articles on the primacy of quantum logic in the natural world. And that's what I'm referring to here, that actually when you look at quantum logic being the primary thing, that there's actually no return to classical logic, as one researcher said, I love that, then you know that we can start looking for historical examples. Maybe we can find examples in movies like Casablanca that came out in 1942. Some people actually remember that Humphrey Bogart's character said, play it again, Sam. If you watch the movie now, at least as far as I know, it's still this way, you won't see any reference and any inclusion of that dialogue in the entire movie. And so this is an invitation then for all of us as we recognize 
that thinking and asking yourself, what are your earliest Mandela Effect memories? What are the earliest examples of something being a little bit off that you noticed? Pay attention, pay closer attention. And thanks to the internet, we can now come together and share some of our experiences. We don't expect that everyone's going to agree with us. In fact, we expect quite the opposite. You might have heard of Stephen Hawking, the famous physicist. He co-authored a paper with Thomas Hertog back in 2006 about top-down cosmology. And I love the quote that Thomas Hertog included. You've got it here somewhere. Yes, quantum mechanics forbids a single history. So that in itself isn't that shocking, but then when you put that together with the observation that I am making that quantum physics can't be swept under the rug, that quantum logic and quantum phenomena absolutely are occurring at every level of reality, then you start recognizing just how big this Nelson Mandela effect really is. So I'd like you to keep thinking about early examples as you continue to ask my favorite question, which is, how good can it get? Especially when you're looking at shifting realities, the Mandela effect is really important. So as you ask yourself, I wonder what else could have changed? What else have I noticed? And how good can it get when I notice these things? Then you'll have, as I've experienced, better results in terms of finding things and also having good experiences in general. So until next time, this is Cynthia Sue Larson. And again, inviting you to keep asking that question pretty much in any time in your life, whether things are going good, bad, or just middling, how good can it get? Take care. <laughs>